conversation. Okay? Uh, there's what you mentioned, the California wide down. Um, I don't know where they stand right now to talk to them. I don't know what's up with that. Mm -hmm. But um, there's many things you can do. There are many campaigns. Um, it is always important, I think, also for folks on campus to know that the communities around them support them. Um, and because BDS is a tactic, you have many, many, many different targets. Okay? Um, so as a non-student BDS activist, you can target anything from, there's now a big campaign. Um, does anyone know what TIAA CREF stands for? It's the biggest retirement fund in the United States. Okay? They manage almost $400 billion. It's mostly uh, academic and medical professionals who have this retirement plan. Okay? One of the biggest campaigns today run by JVP, Jewish Voice for Peace, is calling on the aircraft to divest from a list of companies that directly benefit from the occupation so on and so forth. Okay? This is an example of how we today run this campaign on both campus and non-campus constituency. Right? So on campuses, BDS groups can say, we asked of our university to divest from the same set of companies that JVP's campaign is targeting. At the same time, you can go to your faculty and tell them, oh guys, by the way, you probably have this kind of fund. Why don't you write a letter to the CEO and being like, I don't want my money invested in this, okay? Um, at the same time, you have um, hospitals around you whose doctors have the same thing. Mm -hmm. So there's many, many different ways and you just need to tap into this. I, I advise everyone to go Maybe we should send around an email after with like resources because there is um, bdsmovement.net, so like the BNC's website. There's PACB, uh, there's U US ACB, the US campaign for academic and cultural boycott of Israel, actually based in uh, Davis. I think that's where the organizers are. Um, there's many different things that sites, resources you need to tap into and work together with. Um, Yeah, so there are many, many ways. Um, I want to see if there's a question particularly about, um, oh. is there any other question? Shai? Yeah. Okay. So as Americans, a lot of our tax dollars actually go to financing Israel's military. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that we could get our, uh, get our politicians to not support this? Yes, yes you can. There has been a very long, ongoing campaign, led by the U.S. campaign to end Israeli occupation in D.C., that um, as they're doing it for years now. There's these postcards and uh, you send to your local congressmen or women um, asking them to not support military agents or the continuation of military agents. So they can, you can go on their website, U.S. campaign to end Israeli occupation. Um, yeah, it's like the biggest umbrella group for Palestine activism in the States, although they're not. Um, and um, yeah, go on the website. There's tons of work around that. Um, so definitely, there's a lot to do. Which is it's just another way of doing non-campus mm -hmm. activism. Mm -hmm. um, you know, UC Irvine students um, and local constituencies can all organize and protest together in front of your local congressman's house for their support of the military. For example, right? I mean. Um, which, the first, the U.S. campaign? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> there is, it's the U.S. campaign to end Israeli occupation. Just Google it, you'll find it. Um, just Google BDS, you'll find like a million. There's literally millions of results, and you're, you're really not alone, you know? ET, you know? Send a little bye. You're like, you're good, you have internet. <laughs> you are connected, there's no um, and, um, and the other is bdsmovement.net. Just the BNC the Board of National Committee's official website. Um, and again, there's a national SJP mailing list where we coordinate everything. Okay? So you have people on that list. You see everyone is represented there. I think it's Yazid. You folks know Yazid? Yeah, SJP is on the list. Mm -hmm. as, as a group? Yeah. Wonderful. It's our, it's our collab email that's on the list. Great. Yeah. So you get the info, talk to your local folks from SJP, and Get in the loop. There's a lot of work to be done. And um, I'm not going to end with this, but I just, just feel like saying that. Um, we should be optimistic. Okay? I know that things seem dire, they seem difficult. It seems like you're up against the entire world. 
To an extent, it's true. Okay? No, no, that, we, we shouldn't divert ourselves. On the other hand, Israel today, in the words of its own state officials, is in its worst standing in the international community that it has ever been. Okay? This, to a large degree, is a result of BDS efforts. It's a result of us trying to issue arrest warrants against Israeli generals when they visit London and Madrid. It's a result of UC Berkeley, it's a result of Hampshire, it's a result of you disrupting the motherfucker, uh, my ambassador. Michael Warren, yes. Then I said it's a camera. <laughs> Is that what you um, I'll edit it out. They can hear. <laughs> you know, bloody guys. Um, yeah, all these things together are accumulating. This is what a decentralized network of activists does, right? It's sometimes hard to see how one sort of is built on top of the other because there isn't a hierarchy when you know, oh, we start from here, we end there, we know where we are, okay? On the other hand, people build on each other's shoulders. Sometimes they don't even rec recognize that. UC Berkeley built on Hampshire. Hampshire built on a million other examples. And you folks can build on everyone and know that there are people to help you and know that you're not alone. You're not alone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do we have any more questions? Yes, we can go back to you now. Okay. okay. Uh, I was having a conversation with uh, the Jewish students here at Kansas on the road, and I thought it was actually interesting. Um, and we brought up the topic of BDS. And what he was saying was that there are a lot of Israelis and a lot of Jews who would actually support even the settlements and would support a reasonable two state solution. Mm -hmm. But his perspective, um, yep. is that what BDS is doing inside of Israel is What's radicalizing, right, yeah, yeah, bringing it all the right way, giving them a political power, and marginalizing the left in the center. And since ultimately the objective of BDS is to get the Israeli government to change their policies. Can I tear the shreds and two sentences? Yeah. Can I, okay, good. Can I, um, yeah. There is an Israeli left. I'm saying this as one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and no, I'm, I'm very serious and I'm very sad about it, but point is hmm? what the entire international community has done for the last two decades is to say, look, 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 we're not going to sanction Israel or be against it because what we need to do is support progressive Israelis because then they will put pressure on their own government to end this occupation. Sorry, not happening. Hmm? The same interview I mentioned at the beginning of my talk with this guy who was like a liberal science, he said the same thing, right? He said, yeah, but you know, you're just giving them ammunition, and we all want peace, you know, honest to God. I told him, my friend, listen, as an Israeli, the last thing I want is to boycott my own. Really, I mean, it's not easy for me. I don't want to boycott my state, I don't want to boycott my people, my neighbors. Not easy, okay? In general, boycotts are not a no, nice thing, they're a last resort, okay? Which means, and I told him that very on camera, I said, if you and 10,000 of you were willing to come with me every week to Belayim, hmm? to get shot, tear gas, rubber bullets, and stun grenades, and get arrested and beaten every week, together with the people of Palestine in their struggle against this occupation, then maybe there will be no BDS. As long as you don't do that, we have no other alternative, okay? Had there been a progressive movement to support, we would all be like, okay, we need to support people on the ground, and obviously it's much easier. The point is, and it's simple, Dialogues, conversation, all of this has exhausted itself. And you can see it statistically every time that we were during um, eras of negotiations, settlement expansion doubled, if not tripled. Oslo is the biggest era of settlement expansion. Okay, let's not forget that. That's peacetime, not wartime, peacetime. Hmm? The poll I mentioned in my talk before, two-thirds of Israelis my age think Palestinians should be stripped off every right. Who is it you want to talk to when this is the reality on the ground? Third thing I would say is this. You would expect to see a correlation okay, between the level of assaults on Israelis from Palestinians and the level of Israeli racism towards Palestinians, right? In other words, the more they attack us, the more we hate them. Oh, they're coming, Jim. Um, but what you see on the ground, and as these polls show very clearly, it's very disturbing. Since in the last five years, attacks on Israel have gone down 97%, roughly. Okay? Palestinian violent attacks on Israel have gone down, down 
you're moving from years of over 400 Israeli civilians dead to one, two, or even zero Israeli casualties. Okay? As this is happening, Israeli racism towards Palestinians in the last five years has been steadily going up. Okay? Israelis are more racist the less violent Palestinians exercise against them. Funny, curious relationship there. Okay? I can go into a theoretical explanation of why this is, but that's not the point. The point I'm trying to make about this is what the folks th that you spoke to would tell you is if our sins only stop, then we can talk, everything will be resolved. Truth of the matter is, we've been talking on the same thing for 20 years, nothing has moved. Israel continues to expand the settlement, Gaza is still under siege day after day. Hmm? Let's not forget, and if people actually tell them that, there was a ceasefire for almost half a year with Hamas. Israel was the one to break it. Huh? So the whole argument of like, oh, okay, if they stop, we'll stop, is not true. And if they will stop, they will stop to the degree that they will maintain the status quo. The status quo, let us not forget, is occupation. It's not end up with, it's occupation. Hmm? So all those people, in the end, the conversation comes down to, okay, Palestinians stop their thing. No resistance, no nothing, but all. Do they have sovereignty, full rights the next morning? Yes or no? You know what? Let's give this really time. Three days, okay? Do they or do they not? The answer is absolutely not. They don't. Hmm? As long as this is the situation, the only means to change this reality is by pressuring Israel. And if Israelis were more racist and vote more to liberal, it's not because of BDS, but it's just started. Hmm? What you see on the other hand is that Israelis, it's very interesting, like the person who was debating me on TV, what you see happening is that all the people who are like kind of on the left but never spoke out, but like were like two state Zionists, but not really, hmm? these people now say, okay, 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 we don't want BDS. It's going to be detrimental and awful to our society. But if you don't want this to happen, we have to put an alternative on the table. We have to do something. We have to push forth a peace proposal. We have to do something. So, and this is another thing that radical movements do, and BDS is a radical movement to that extent, right? You push people that are not in as radical or whatever. I don't think it's a radical movement. They're not where you are yet. Hmm? Like the Israeli left, okay? And tell them, guys, there are two alternatives. You have a racist government or BDS. If you don't want this to be the two alternatives, offer a solution. And as long as they can't offer you a solution, there's no reason to let go of BDS. That would be my answer. People seem slightly tighter. Let's take a lap. Let's take like a round of whatever we have and finish off, and we can talk over lunch, coffee, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, just to, to go back to what you said about um, like us being living here in Orange County, considered the backwater and stuff. That even when um, like every time there's a success in pro Palestinian activism, the Zionist organization issue a call of like of boycotting UCI because of its supposed pro-Palestinian stance, which is of course not true, but you know, they, because the administration is forced to be more objective when it's on the spotlight, right? right? So that objectivity is, 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 a, is a reason for, to like, you know, to, to, to say like, you know, to boycott UCI. So if we, if we go through with BDS, they'll probably unleash like a whole flood water of like, you know, like on, you should not come here, you know, the... Is it, That's uh, your administration's problem, not yours. I mean, let me just say this. As Naomi Klein told me, like the more enemies you make, the more successful you are because it means they're afraid. Same thing. If that, if, if, if what you're saying is true, and the result of your BDS campaign will be the Zionist establishment of this country coming up against a university system, we won. I mean, let them fight. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, at the point where a state establishment has to fight a university system, it's preposterous. Uh, they want to call for the boycott of the UC system. They did. It's idiotic. I mean, they, they're so stupid. So I, I'm shocked sometimes at how stupid they are. And this is shooting yourself in the leg. Re more than your leg, it's shooting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been shot, so I know it's not nice. Um, point being, if that's a result, then yeah, I guess. But again, in order to not let this get there in the sense that you want the university not to freak out and then turn against you, build your coalition. Work slowly and work with the admin sometimes. I know that we all tend to be very oppositional. At times, it's good to work with them. You know, you need to know to work in both channels, veins, and decide what's smarter and which point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay.
Okay, so with that, I want to thank you all for coming out. Today was uh, informational. We just wanted to mention, first of all, if you guys have any of the completed surveys, you can please uh, turn them up at the front. Um, also, please join us tonight at 8 p.m. We're having uh, an event with Hedy Epstein, Holocaust survivor Hedy Epstein, at 8 p.m. in Social Science Lecture Hall. Um, and obviously, we have more events tomorrow, uh, so please make it up. Thanks.